Welcome back. OK, let's get my next guest right out of here. He's one of our best young actors. It is the fabulous Mr Russell Trovey. <laughs> See what you've got here. Come and sit down. It's great to have you here. Okay, so I think I can see what's popping out your black yeah, bag. Yeah, we're trying to hide that. That's meant to be a big secret. So oh. who's that little fella? This is a new addition to my family. This would be. Oh. This is Rocky. Oh wow. Oh my. Can you can you see a similarity? Wow. Or? Yeah, well they do say dogs look <laughs> like their owners. Yeah. There is something oh. going on there in the years department, isn't there, Russell? Yeah, a little bit. Hey, he's like, like father, like sweet. son, that's why I wanted him. Hello, little boy. Oh, he's my. amazing. Oh, my. oh, I'm feeling broody. He sleeps all the time, he farts all the time. Oh, when I picked him up, I had him taxi for 15 minutes and he farted oh. five times. I oh. thought, that's my boy. <laughs> wow. That's what the one I want. What a beauty. And how old is he now? Five months. What a gorgeous dog. <laughs> oh, and so... <laughs> my I, boy. Yeah. I love him. Oh, look at that. Do you, might, do you want to cover his penis up? Because what? I'm just no. saying, it's a little... <laughs> you might want to slip a hand down there. I don't know, or maybe not, yeah. We're allowed, it's just that... Uh, he's looking right. at you adoringly, and I'm getting the, old, I'm getting the one eye action going on there. <laughs> Sorry, right, baby. Okay. Oh, he's right, a good... Baby. Man. Well, hey. do you want to... Should we put him backstage so we can yeah, chat? Or do you want to yeah. keep him with you? I mean, yeah. that might be easy. Oh, I know, he's cute, isn't he? He is gorgeous, isn't he? Got him. You got him? Do not drop him. <laughs> See you later on, Rockstar. Uh, go on the carpet, go out that way. Don't drop him over the hard floor, you heartless. <laughs> uh, well, listen, never mind all the dog yeah, chat. Dog, Thank dog, you for bringing yeah. it. Hey, great. So figuring out a vet show. <laughs> we could sit here and that, chat yeah. for hours about dogs. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I so love it. I don't know if we have any fans of being human here in the audience tonight, but it was one of, in my house, it was a must-see show. Oh. And we were, we were sad to see you leave it, I've got to be said. Yeah. What a great series. And you, I don't know if you know this, but your character, as you played him, you got voted one of the ten best werewolves. Did you know that? Ten, ten best work because there's a lot of werewolves to choose from. <laughs> isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what a great role that was. Yeah, great no, George part, great. was George was a big part of my life for a long time. I I love playing that character. And well, would I be right in thinking that's the role most people know you from, or do they come up when they come up to you in the street? What do people say they they know you, they recognise you from? Well, a lot of people say, "How do I know you?" So you go, "All right, I'm, I'm an actor. But well, what have you been in?" So you sort of go, "Okay." So and these actors dread that question because yeah. they don't know who you are. You feel like a bit of a knob, basically, yeah. reeling yeah. off your CV. You do, you reel off your CV and they're like, nah, nah, not seeing that, nah. <laughs> I don't really watch TV, mate, to be honest. <laughs> you're like, okay, fine. Or if they do see it, they've seen me in Gavin and Stacey. Yeah, yeah. Which is like, I play a part in that called Budgie. There he is. <laughs> yeah. But you uh, didn't have a, you wasn't a big part, No, was it? not a big part, but so many people recognise me. And especially when I go back to Essex, they're like, Budgie, <laughs> you're a legend, mate. And I'm always like, what? I had like four lines. <laughs> but, but you delivered them I so delivered well. I delivered really well. I put uh, Billericay on the map. So you're an Essex boy. You just mentioned you're an Essex boy big originally. Uh, was Proud. it always on the cards for your acting? Were you the kind of family, your family want you to go into that kind of, were they supportive or... Or, or were you an anomaly? Were you, was it unusual? Um, I was very eccentric as a kid. I used to kind of ricochet all over the place what I wanted to do. But I knew I wanted to be an actor from about the age of 10. I had like a summer holiday where I watched Dead Poets Society, Goonies, Stand By Me, Home Alone. And I remember thinking, I want to be American and a runaway. And I want to, <laughs> I want to find one eyed Willie. That was my <laughs> agenda. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, so, and so then I, so I said to my parents, I want to go to drama club. So my mum was very behind me. My dad was paranoid. I nearly went to Sylvia Young's, you know, the theatre school. So what did your parents do? What, what were my their... parents run a coach company in Essex. I'll say the name, you'll probably edit it out, but Gatwick Flyer, that's a really good plug. The Gatwick Flyer? Yeah, but okay. that's, that'd be where, uh, where does it? Where does it go to? Uh, well, it's, it's a shuttle service. <laughs> OK, you go. <laughs> to, to get me, yeah, yeah. OK. To get, um, to get, but they also cover Stansted and South Well, I apologise yeah, then for like, jumping yeah, to the stupid you know. conclusion that they were merely Gatwick-based. Get your facts right. They were no. Gatwick-centric. <laughs> um, They're a shuttle service. So did, they, did your dad want you to go into that? Did he my dad, you? yeah, my, they kind of tentatively asked me to do uh, a coach kind of licence to learn my coach skills, and I sort of was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. Because yeah. you get a phone call at three in the morning saying, like, a coach of passengers has broke down in A127, can you get out there? And you're not going to say no? No, you can't, because it's family business, so I sort of haven't put myself in that position. But they knew that I was kind of like the... Very smart of you, though, not to go that way. Yeah, cruel, yeah. maybe. I should. My brother now runs a business. And, and he hates you, probably, because yeah, he gets the three o'clock call when you can't yeah. go out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, they, they were very... My mum was very much... My dad was worried that I'd go to 
drama club, drama school, come out with no qualifications, just be able to tap dance. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and it didn't go that way, but I can't tap dance. And that, that, won't, that won't get you to Gatwick. No, that won't. You can't <laughs> tap dance to Gatwick. No. Um, OK, so let's talk about Job Lot, then. Yes, that's why yeah. I invite you on. Job Lot is, I've seen the first episode. Have you? It's very funny. Yeah, I've got it on DVD. And it starts on Monday on ITV at 9.30. Correct. OK, uh, tell me about the premise, though. For those who haven't seen it, obviously they haven't yet. What, what's... Premise, it's set in a Midlands job centre, and it's an observational comedy, basically observing the job seekers and the people who work in the job centre. So it's kind of the minutiae of uh, a job seeker, like the things that, when you work in an office situation, that kind of become very kind of heightened. Have a look at this, this is a clip from Job Lot, starts Monday Night on ITV, you're gonna like it. <laughs> Monday Night ITV is very funny, yeah. and very human as well. Okay, uh, I need to talk to you about History Boys, because yeah. oh. History Boys was just an incredible film. I didn't see it on stage, I wish I'd seen you did guys do it on stage, I never saw it on stage, I, and I wish I had. Uh, and you were here in London, and then you all went, because you all went to Broadway, didn't you? Yeah, we went around the world to begin with, we went to Hong Kong, Sydney, New Zealand, then we ended up in Broadway, so incredible. we did the show about 600 and something And so times. a real troupe of young actors, yeah. so many of you have gone on to the bigger things, I'm sure the rest of them will as well. Uh, what are your memories of that period? That must have been such a remarkable time. It was just like a phenomenon, I mean it was just, the Broadway was the thing that was the most kind of awe-inspiring because we felt like what we were like the Broadway version of One Direction. You know, whatever your, your taste was, it was catered for, and people in New York loved us, and like we felt like a boy band. Looking back, you realise how amazing experience it was. And Richard Griffiths, the late Richard Griffiths, which is so sad, actually said to us, "Boys, this is rare. This is not going to happen all the time." And at that age, you're like, yeah, all right, Rizzo, shut up. It's going to be fine. I'm going to get the next one. I'm going to go Broadway with that. But you realise now, being around for a bit longer, that it, it was such a, a unique, yeah. incredible experience. And all of us, I mean, all of us worked before that. But being associated with the History Boys, since that point, it felt like we crossed all mediums, like the film and the play, we did a radio play. As soon as the show finished and we landed back in London, it felt like the boardroom doors of the acting profession really yeah. went, come in, take a seat. What do you fancy doing? You know, I spoke to James Corden about it briefly, because of course he was part of the, the troop with you there. You see him at the back, he looks pretty different now as well as at the back. There's another. He's not happy about that picture. He's not happy about that no. picture, no. He'll be, he'll be thrilled when we show that. We, we could just say we showed it in the wrong ratio. Um, <laughs> but uh, he was saying that like, almost everyone who was anyone came to see that in New York. I mean, it was crazy. It was crazy. We have a thing, oh, I have a thing when you're doing a show. When you do a show for so long, you ask the front of the house, is there any ABs in tonight? Are there any adrenaline boosters? Every night was an adrenaline booster. We had them all. We had everybody. We had like Paul Newman come back, Julia Roberts come back, Tom Hanks, David Bowie and man started off the stand ovation. Well, Steve Spielberg. David Bowie started off a standing yeah. ovation. And we wow. was out there and we saw him and he's all dressed in white and he stood up first and it was just. Hey, like, did you hear go, blah, blah? <laughs> <laughs> you, you <laughs> well done, boys. They're all stars. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the history boys. <laughs> Something like that. But he started off the ovation and it was incredible. And like one night actually we came back. And we went to go out and Callista Flockhart and Harrison Ford were standing there. Wow. And we were all like, oh my God, thank you so much for coming back. It's great. Met them and everything. They didn't want to come back. They were just waiting for their car. So the security <laughs> had put them backstage so that they could just get away from everybody outside. They hated the place. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think anything will ever replace that experience in your life. My advice to you would be, get a puppy. Do you think... Oh, done that already. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, oh, look right. at him out holding. You've lost that. You have oh, lost that puppy. Oh, my God. Rocky's been trying to love me. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh. That's why. Like, is he farted yet? No. No. Oh. He wouldn't fart. Oh, are you talking about meatloaf? <laughs> 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 Sorry, me. Okay, so. Uh, it's been great having you here. Oh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in saying thank you to the fabulous Mr. Russell Tovey? Thank you very much. Thanks. Great to have thank you here. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Okay. Don't go away because coming after the break we will have that Jaffa Cake Challenge. Rudimental will be playing live and the bad out of hell himself, Meatloaf, will be joining me on the couch.